Can I tell you all a secret? Because I have a confession to make. I used to love ratting out other people. It was a trait I developed when I was a corporate cobra. I thrived on the hunt, always ready to take advantage of someone else's weakness. I'm here today because I want to share and confess some of the secrets I kept when I was a corporate cobra and share the lessons I learned when those secrets began to keep me. Picture the corporate landscape. It's a true jungle. Am I right? We can adopt the persona of a cobra, sleek, strategic, and dangerously defensive. We humans guard or increase our professional territories fiercely. We are ready to strike, to defend our roles and the value of the work we contribute to our organizations. As a corporate cobra, this survival instinct is often masked as ambition. The fear of losing not just tangible achievements like promotions, bonuses, or praise, but also the fear of losing job security and our professional identities drives us to coil tighter around pursuits of accumulation and the hope of future aspirations. The more we amass, the more we have to lose. But there is a twist in the tail of any cobra. The urge to protect and accumulate stifles. The ability to lead, to create, to collaborate, and ultimately to contribute. Just as a cobra can be mesmerizing, Self-preservation can mesmerize us and cloud our judgment. Ironically, this excessive preoccupation with accumulating corrodes job effectiveness. The very act of safeguarding impedes us from performing our duties with the mastery they require. This diverts precious time and energy away from achieving better outcomes, working together, and increasing stakeholder value. The defensive stance of a cobra eventually results in behaviors that contradict who we really are. When I was early in my career, my initial instinct was always to compete. I felt I had to in order to survive. I'm naturally an overachiever, and I love to win. I'm super competitive. I have another confession. I actually love working. It's like a hobby for me. And back then, a large part of my identity was wrapped up in what I did for work. I defined myself by my job title. I was perfectly poised to adopt the corporate cobra persona. And when I stand like this, I kind of look like a cobra with my hood all puffed out, don't I? <laughs> well, early in my career, I was doing a great job at one of my first opportunities after college. So great that the organization wanted to hire somebody else to do what I was doing. If one person was bringing in so much, two would bring in double. It's logical, right? So they hired a guy named Max. Max was really good, very talented and smart. And it wasn't long before he was surpassing me. He honestly was outperforming me. Max proved their theory that if one was good, two were better. So it goes, they eventually wanted a third person and they were going to promote one of us to manage this team. I have another confession. I wanted this promotion. Badly. So badly. I felt I deserved it. I was there first. I was the original. All of this was only happening because of the work I did in the first place. Well, it turns out Max wanted that promotion too. So he went into overdrive on his work. I have another confession. I went into overdrive on Max. I went out of my way to make him look bad. I hissed at all of his ideas. And I watched him from the weeds like a predator, waiting for him to make a mistake of any size so that I could publicly point it out. So if all my time was spent watching Max's performance, what do you think happened to my own? Yep, 
went downhill real fast. I missed deadlines. I had a lot of errors. I had to slither silently into so many meetings because I was late from trying to catch Max being late to his meetings. My timely communication started to decline. And ultimately, so did the organization's trust in me and in my ability to do my job. I created the very scenario I was trying to prevent because Max got that promotion instead of me. And I almost lost my job. I found myself burrowed in a hole of my own making. No one trusted me. And I had alienated so many people in the organization by my behavior. And my presence was about as welcome as a snake at a backyard barbecue. But I deserved that, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> this is the most profound irony of self-preservation, this self-fulfilling prophecy that gets set in motion. The tighter we grip what we value, material possessions, deeply held beliefs, or aspirations for future gains, the more rapidly they slip through our fingers. And because of that, these days, I'm much more of a corporate capybara, social, collaborative, cooperative. The fact that a capybara is a rodent is not lost on me, but it's a lot more cuddly looking than a cobra and far less dangerous. And growth is a never ending process. And I have a lot of the animal kingdom to evolve through yet, but I've learned the art of shedding my own skin not just once, but continually, allowing for growth and renewal. And leaving behind a layer of skin or protection exposes us to uncertainties and new challenges. So what defenses can you shed? How can you uncoil that tight grip of control and open your hearts and minds to new ideas and new connections? My resistance to working with Max led me away from unseen opportunities. He had skills I didn't have. He saw things I didn't see. How much more could I have been if I had worked with him instead of focusing all my efforts on getting that promotion for myself? In shedding, we discover the ability to expand our circle of influence versus shrinking it. We work together and collaborate on tough problems. Real strength doesn't lie in how tightly you hold on to your position, but in how willing you are to open your hands and collaborate. I think my next evolution is going to be to a corporate caterpillar, where I can continue radical transformation and emerge from my cocoon with beautiful wings instead of this hood. Thank you.